Yeah, we see him. We hear what they said. We know what they're thinking. They already got us taking the hill. That's nothing new. We've been here before. They counted us out. Told us we were spending. Let's go! Let's go! And what did you think? We were just supposed to give up? Nah. Mother Mary wouldn't have that. So yeah, we're still here. We don't stop. We don't quit. Because when you grab like we do, adversity does not phase you. It motivates you. Keeps you coming back for more. So no matter how many challenges we face, well, how many times we get knocked down? Best believe we get right back up. So keep that same energy. Keep talking because we are eating. Keep thinking that you know how this story ends. It's cool. Because we on a ride. And this is only the beginning. by head coach Terry Sims, who's entering his seventh season at the helm of the program and 11th year overall here in Daytona Beach with BCU. Coach, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you, Mike? I'm doing well. First off, I wanted to reflect a little bit on the season previous. It was the first time BCU was back on the field after a long uh, absence due to the unfortunate situations around, around the pandemic. What was it like essentially having to come in and rebuild the program this year? Uh, it was tough, but, you know, it, it was rewarding in the sense of we were able to be back around our team, be back with these young men that, you know, we care so much for. So it, it, was, it was a great opportunity for us to start back doing what we, you know, are here to do. This was your first full recruiting cycle since 2019. What was it like to get back on the road and interact with recruits again? Refreshing. It was refreshing to get back out, see high school coaches, see junior college coaches, uh, it gave us an opportunity to continue to cultivate relationships and uh, continue to bring great m young men to Bethune-Cookman University. And we will see a lot of that talent on the field in 2022. Let's get yes. right to it. Some of the impact players we'll be seeing at Daytona Stadium this fall, starting off with quarterback Jalen Jones. Jalen, a native of Enrico, Virginia, transfers in from Mississippi Delta Junior College. Yeah, you know, Jalen gives us a presence. Uh, he gives us a mature guy, a guy that has played the game, understands the game, and he's a true leader. All the true qualities you want, you know, in a, a quarterback coming into your, your, your football team to lead us. And he is a SWAC veteran, having previously played at Jackson State for one and a half seasons under Coach Deion Sanders. Yeah, we actually played against Jalen in the MEX SWAC Challenge uh, and liked a lot of the things we saw then. Uh, we found out he was transferring and he was going to junior college and we knew we had an opportunity to get him. We, we put everything we had into going out and uh, getting him. Over a thousand yards passing, seven touchdowns, 46 carries for 235 yards and three touchdowns on the ground at Mississippi Delta Community College last year. What does a dual threat quarterback like that bring to the BCU offense? Well, I, I think that's what you have to have definitely in our league. You have to have a guy that he can make plays with his arm, but he can also make plays with his legs. And that's Jalen. He, and he's a guy that is not rattled very easily. So you need someone like that on your team. And I think he'll be able to do a lot for our football team this coming year. Let's talk about running back Brandon McDonald, a Feltrum Prep Academy.
Academy uh, product and a product of Ohio high school system, an all Ohio player. What does he bring as a burst of speed type of player? When you look at when you look at uh, Brandon play, he's a, a big back, has great vision, really really good speed for a big guy, great balance. Uh, he was something that we we knew we would be missing. We lost Ladarian Wilson. We needed a big back to come into our system, and I think Brandon does everything that, that we need him to do uh, for our football team. McDonald is the all-time leading rusher at Alter High School, over 4,600 yards for the varsity team. And our offers from 12 D1 schools were chose to come to Bethune Cookman. And how important is it to scout those prep school ranks? Because he didn't choose to go to college right away. Right, and and you know some people say, well, kids go to prep school because they're not eligible, and a lot of different reasons. A lot of kids go to prep schools because they did not have the opportunity to be recruited like they wanted to be. So they go to prep school to play an extra year and not lose that year of eligibility. So it's very important to go after prep school kids like Brandon so he'll have an opportunity to come and play his four years here and help this football team out. What's the dynamic, you said, as a power back? What does he bring to the table to make opposing defenses kind of focus in on this? Well, I, I think one thing, you, you know, he helps you in short yardage. He, he'll, he'll help you when you, you, you need to get that tough yard, those tough two yards. And he can also block in, in, in pass protection. So there are a lot of things I think that uh, Brandon brings to the table. And he'll be a guy that would help us out tremendously. All right, let's go to the defensive side of the ball. And quarterback Gabriel Bryan from Windsor, Connecticut, played his first three college seasons at Wagner College at the FCS level. So no stranger to this brand of football. He's not. He was a starter at Wagner, and, and he, he told us uh, when we uh, talked to him, we found out he was in the portal. He's a guy that, that wants to compete. He loves competition. Uh, he, he's, he's an aggressive corner. He's a guy that plays uh, very, very well in man coverage, understands schemes, uh, and I, I don't think he, he's afraid of anything. So he's a guy that we're looking forward to, you know, helping us this year. He was recruited to Wagner as a wide receiver, but after his freshman season transition to defensive back, also saw time on punt coverage and in kick returns. He's a very versatile player. He can play everywhere. Very athletic young man and, and a young man that we're looking to come in and do some big things for us defensively. All right, well, finally, linebacker Rosendo Lewis. He's a Florida kid, originally from Deerfield Beach, a former three-star prospect and Under Armour All-American who formerly played at South Carolina. He did, and you know he graduated early from South Carolina, uh, has, has a couple years left to play, uh, a guy that's a student of the game, very, very intelligent young man. Uh, he, he's played some rushing, he's played a lot of linebacker, and that's what he'll be playing for us at linebacker, and we're looking for great things through his leadership and his play on defense. Had his career at South Carolina, a little bit interrupted by injuries, but right here, Apathy Cookman this year ready to take the field and ready to be a star in that linebacking court. No question, and we're looking forward to him coming in and being a star at our linebacking position. It's time to introduce all of our mid-year recruits. Let's take a look.
changing landscape of bold leadership in business, education, research, and STEM, creating innovative ways for new Wildcats to change the world. Get ready, the tide is rising. It's time for you to catch the next wave in higher education at Bethune-Cookman University. Welcome back to the Bethune-Cookman National Signing Day Show. I'm happy to be joined by BCU quarterback Jalen Jones. Welcome to the Bethune-Cookman University football family. Right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glad to be here, glad to be here. And during the recruiting process, what was it that drew you to the BCU program and what, what made you want to take your talents to Daytona Beach? I mean, Coach Sims touched on it a little bit earlier. You know, I, I had already been familiar with Bethune-Cookman being a, a powerhouse in the MEAC um, when we faced them back in 2019. And then, you know, uh, being able to run back in with uh, Coach Hayes. He was a coach at Jackson State in the past. Uh, and had ties in the Mississippi area. So when he came and they started recruiting me and I had a few conversations with him, um, it was just a lot of love and respect and mutual respect that I had for uh, Bethune staff and that they had for me. And so it was just a, a great environment just coming here and deciding to come to Daytona Beach. Yeah, you mentioned that you played for Jackson State in the past. So you're returning to the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Yeah. Seeing those familiar teams across the field from you, how is that gonna help you transition to the BCU program? No, I mean, I think it's, it's going to be, like Coach said, it's a, a veteran a veteran in the SWAC and, and knowing what it takes to, you know, be successful in the in the conference, you know, and just being that older guy in the locker room that's able to really be a leader and show every guy, everybody else, you know, hey, these are the teams that we got to face. They're, they're just teams, they, they lace their shoes up the same way we do, you know, and just going out there and just, you know, being ready to take on everybody. And specifically, Jackson State, we're going to have to play them this year. We're in the yeah. same division. and. What are you? What are your thoughts about going up against your former team? I'm happy they come here. They come into Daytona Beach, so you know we're gonna bring them to the stadium. We're gonna have a good game. It's gonna be exciting. They have a lot of you know hype surrounding their program. You know, uh, it's competition builds the best in everybody, and so it's it's going to be very exciting going up against them. And what are your goals for this upcoming season, both personally and for the team as a whole? Honestly, my my goal is always to bring a swag championship to Bethune Cookman and go out there and win a celebration bowl uh, for the team is really just building those relationships with the guys and being able to step in and be a leader for the team and you know just being somebody that everybody can look to and count on and that's really something I look forward to doing. Thank you so much for taking the time to join the program this evening Jalen uh, we're all looking forward to seeing you wear the maroon and gold this fall. Coming up next we're taking a look at our fall class of 2022.
we're going to head to a short break, but when we come back, it's time to find out who the Wildcats will be battling on the field in 2022. The schedule release is next, and coming up at the end of the program, we have a Q&A with Coach Sims. So get your questions in the YouTube chat, and they could be read out on air for Coach Sims to answer. We'll be right back. Founded in 1920, the Southwestern Athletic Conference has produced some of the most iconic names in sports. Alabama A&M, Alabama State, Alcorn State, Bethune-Cookman, Florida A&M, Grambling State, Jackson State, Mississippi Valley State, Prairie View A&M, Southern, Texas Southern, and the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff have united to embark on a new era of greatness. The Southwestern Athletic Conference, building champions for life. Well, Coach, there it is. Eight games, four home games, and of course, Florida Classic at the end of it against Florida A&M in Orlando. How did the schedule shape up on your end? Uh, I, I like the layout of the schedule. I, I, I like how it's, it, it's flowing. Uh, you know, we start out playing Miami. Uh, then we go up against a, a familiar foe in uh, South Carolina State, which is always a, a tough game. So I think before we go into conference play, we play two really good football teams, and I think it'll be a great test for our football team. And another tough non-conference test uh, later in the season against Tennessee State as well. Home games against South Carolina State, as you mentioned, Grambling, Jackson State, and Alabama State. You can see the outlines in red are our home dates. A road date against Miami, Alabama A&M, Tennessee State, Mississippi Valley State, Prairie View, Alcorn, and it's listed as a away game, but it's in Orlando against Florida A&M. We, we always want to get back at the Rattlers after last year. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I wouldn't say get back. I mean, you know, it, it, was, it was time for them to win a game. Uh, we, we didn't want them to win, but, you know, after nine straight, they won one, but we'll get back on track this year. Uh, I think, you know, our football team is hungry. They're embarrassed uh, by what happened this year, and we should be. Uh, we're back working. The guys are working out. Coaches are working hard. And we'll be back where we need to be in 2022 season. Let's talk about the first game of the year up against Miami on September 3rd. What does a game like that tell you about the players you have on the field? Well, you know, a lot of people say, well, you guys play those games. They're, they're money games. I use it as a, a measuring stick for my football team to see where we are. You play a team like Miami when you, you start out the season. I think it increases your team speed, and what, my, what I mean by that is it increases the, the speed that you play at. It increases the, 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 the clocks in the, our players' heads. So I love to play games like this. Uh, it shows our guys where we are. It shows the coaches where we are, uh, and I think it gives us a kickstart on into the season. You mentioned the former conference foe in South Carolina State. They were neck and neck with you in your years in the MEAC in terms of titles won and games won. And so that's going to be a tough challenge, but they're coming here to Daytona Stadium. Yeah, they are. Uh, and, and, you know, South Carolina State's always a tough football team. It's always a tough game. It's always a physical game, but we look forward to it. Uh, you know, Coach Pugh, we're great friends. Uh, we, we, we talk a lot, you know, uh, about different things. He has been a mentor uh, in, in this thing since I have been a head coach, uh, helping me through a lot. So looking forward to him coming here and uh, us getting back at them this year. Let's talk about the conference schedule. What is you going to be looking for the second time around against all of these Southwestern Athletic Conference opponents, especially teams like Grambling and teams like Jackson State? Well, you know, we beat Grambling, so <laughs> we're, it's nothing, you know, to get back at them with. I think, you know, now we understand uh, what's going on in this league. Uh, prior to us entering the, the, the SWAC, and being a part of this conference, we were 9-0 against that conference, or against this conference. Uh, we made sure we played a SWAC team every year, uh, and, and we came out on top when we did play SWAC teams. So I think now, playing these teams week in and week out, it's a tough league. And playing these games uh, week in and week out, we have to make sure we're prepared and make sure that we take our A game when we uh, take the field. We will go to one final break tonight before we end our program. Coming up next, it's Q&A with Coach Sims. Get your questions in the YouTube chat, and we'll see you shortly.
this place isn't just a university, it's home. And these buildings aren't just buildings, they're symbols of our growth. And the names that grace them belong to people that have walked the same path. Returning to invest into the future of those who will follow in their footsteps. In the connections that we've built along the way, they're not just that. They're bonds built for a lifetime. Providing the opportunity for growth beyond even the wildest of imaginations. And this woman wasn't just a woman. She was a visionary. She had a dream that became a reality. So we can be afforded the same opportunities to better prepare ourselves for a world that sees us differently. And these are not just our alumni. They're family. They're our ambassadors to the world. Charged with sharing the light that Mother Mary has gifted to all of us. The strength to break barriers. The courage to do what has never been done before. Setting the example for all to follow. That was BCC then, it's BCU now, and the legacy will live on forever. Make sure you join the Cat Eye Network this Saturday and Monday live from Moore Gymnasium as the Bethune-Cookman men's and women's basketball teams perform a Texas two-step at the halfway point of their conference schedule as Prairie View A&M and Texas Southern head to Daytona Beach, Florida. Go to bcuathletics.com for scores and schedules for all BCU sports. Welcome back for the final time to the National Signing Day show here at Bethune-Cookman University. It's time for a little bit of Q&A with Coach Sims. We've got a couple of questions coming in from the YouTube chat. You can still uh, put your questions in to be answered. A question to start off with, what do you see coming out of this recruiting class and, and what are your highlights about your first class since 2019? Well, I see us filling a lot of holes that, that we had. Uh, you know, we had a lot of guys that, that opted out during COVID and chose not to come back. And we had a lot of young guys that we had to play, which is no excuse. We still have to be ready to play. But I think with this mid-year class, we filled a lot of holes. And with, with our, our, our spring class, I think we have a lot of guys that will fill a lot of important holes for us and put us back where we need to be in this conference. Yeah, and springboarding off of that a little bit, we've got a question about player development. What is your player development process up through spring? Well, we're, we're, we're working out right now, and I think you can't just think about developing the player physically. It's mentally also. So, you know, we, we're starting our meetings. We're, we're starting Zoom meetings because of COVID. We're having some in-person meetings, uh, and our guys are working out. We get up at 530 every morning and start workouts. We're running. We're lifting weights. Uh, that's the biggest part of player development, and then you start with the skill development. We've got a question here that is absolutely no surprise to anybody. People want to watch football. They want to know when the spring game is. Uh, our spring game will be April 16th. Uh, it'll be April 16th, and, and, and right now we're, we're saying uh, 1 o'clock on April 16th uh, out at the stadium. There will be more uh, stuff out on it the closer we get to it. Uh, we have to get our guys ready. I believe in going spring a little bit later to give our guys a little bit longer off season to heal from surgeries, or just to prepare their bodies for spring. Another question about specific games. we got homecoming coming up this year. When is that? Well, I'll tell you what. Every game should be homecoming. Every game should be like homecoming. Every game should look like homecoming. It shouldn't just be focused on one date. Uh, that actual date, that's a little bit above my pay grade. Uh, there, there are people that make that decision that, that you know, sit in chairs are a little bit larger than mine. But uh, let, let's make every home game this year homecoming. And everyone come out and support these guys and show them uh, that Wildcats are really behind them. Yeah. I've got a question for you that's, that's not on this sheet. Um, how important to you is it to recruit in your own backyard, the Orlando area, the Tampa area, even down towards South Florida? I think it's very important uh, to, to keep talent home. Uh, but what a lot of people don't realize a lot of kids don't want to stay close to home. You have a few that want to stay home and play, but a lot of kids want to get away. They want to go see new things. And, you know, my thing is with, with any of these young men, I just want to see them going to school and being able to 
uh, be positive, productive citizens when, when, when they you know, have an opportunity to finish playing college football and graduate. Thank you so much for joining us for the 2022 National Signing Day show here from Bethune-Cookman University. For head coach Sims, my name is Michael Trevillo. Have a very pleasant good evening. And don't cut it yet, Dan. <laughs> I have to make sure that I thank Mike for hosting. Uh, we, we have to make sure that we, we thank our production team. Uh, these guys uh, put on a great show. Without them, this would not happen. So uh, guys, I appreciate you. I know no one can see you, but we appreciate your work uh, and, and look forward to working with you in the future. Without them, nobody would be able to see or hear us. Correct. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Bryce, Darian, Dan, you guys, appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Hail Wildcats. What's up, Wildcat Nation? My name is Anthony Griffin. I play cornerback, and I'm ready to get to work, and I'm ready to win some games. Go Wildcats. How y'all doing, Wildcat Nation? This is Akeem Hayes, and I play wide receiver. I can't wait to find some wins to the city of Daytona this fall. See y'all there. What's up, Wildcats? My name is Brandon McDonald. I play running back from Dayton, Ohio. And my message to you guys is go be UM. Here, Wildcats. My name is Octavius Carolina, and I play right receiver. Wildcat Nation, when I get there, we, you better be ready, because you're going to be lit all 2022. My name is Dylan Jackson. I'm from Tampa, Florida, and I play wide receiver. The message I have is I just can't wait to go out there and compete every day and just get better. Go Wildcats. What's good, Wildcat Nation? Damn polite. I play safety. I'm ready to get out there and make an impact, man. Let's do it. Show. Yo, what's up, Wildcat Nation? My name is Abanya Moore. I'm from from North Carolina, and I play quarterback. I look forward to this upcoming season, and hell, Wildcats. Hello, Wildcat Nation. My name is Elias De Leon. I'm from Little Home, Texas. I'm a Juco transfer from Cisco College in Texas. I play offensive line, and one thing you can expect out of me is hard work on the field, in the weight room, and in the classroom. My name is Darius Baker. I'm from College, Mississippi. I play offensive line and I'm here with you. Why can't I make sure to scorching and rehab throughout the sweat? J.D. Bester Shea, offensive lineman, Ellsworth Community College, people of Verena, North Carolina. Wildcat Nation, I'm excited to be here. Happy to be part of the family for the next few years. Let's get to work. Expect some great things out of us this year. I'm ready to work my butt off for you guys. Go Wildcats. Hey Wildcat Nation, this is Daryl Simpson Jr. I'm a defensive end. I'm new here and I'm ready to help the program win championships in the future. Go Wildcats. Wildcat Nation, this is the boy Ains, and we're with that return special at Black Tech High School. I'm ready to work. Bring the electricity to the Wildcat Nation and a little bit of sweat in the wood.